Speaking of making plans, there are three Wallaces running in the top seven. Could they consider linking up, Dave? You know, if we had had Mike Wallace uh, in the draft earlier today, that little mock draft we did, who might he have chosen? Listen to his radio. Yeah, with that 64, 66, we can, we can lead this race and we can all win this race if they'll help, but we'll all help each other there. For a call, go to their spotters up there, okay? I'll go to their crew chief right next to me. Just follow, follow in a row, that's all we're gonna finish here. That's Mike Wallace in the seven car, Stephen Wallace in the 66, and David Stremme in another car owned by Rusty. Oh, we got a spin! Oh, it's it's a tap from Wallace! Rex, right behind you. Oh, the big one in turn one, heavy contact, cars in the wall, Stephen Wallace heavily damaged. There comes Kyle Krisiloff down, David Rudiman involved. Oh, heavy damage on Stephen Wallace's uh, Chevy. He was having such a great run, and Kyle Busch has damage on the right front of his Toyota. Kyle Busch continues to have problems finishing this race. He tried a different strategy, but he still he's caught up in this ripped off. He's checking off pit road first, probably. Yeah, Rudeman has a lot of damage with his Toyota. You see Kyle Busch coming in behind him, so he will not make it four in a row here. But, you know, again, we, we talked about this. We set it up from the beginning. It's Carl Edwards. Carl car. Edwards. We saw Carl Edwards with his hand out the windows. They were coming by us here, headed to turn one. He was waving. There's a 21 car, Stephen Light. Kenny Wallace in the 28 car as uh, Stephen Light gets the uh, children's car fired, tries to pull it away. See the intensity level coming yeah. up on these guys. We saw guys. Mike Wallace look like he was going below David uh, Rudeman right here, but they ran up on a slower car. Wow. Right. right. Man. That's Kevin LePage's 61 that Carl Edwards went up across the back of. And then it all broke loose behind him. Car slipping and sliding. Kelly Byers involved. Brad Keselowski, watch again. Oh, they, you see yeah, what happened here. This 61 was not up to speed. And no, he was it's almost up. like, uh, you know, he, he, these guys moved over and didn't see him. Had no idea that he was coming out. You know, they did. I'm sure that the spotters up there saw him on the apron. They weren't expecting him to come and join back right in front of the leaders. That's just a very unfortunate situation and, and a mistake on Kevin's uh, part and his spotter. You know, quite honestly, somebody's got to be telling him and he has to know that these leaders are coming because he just messed up a lot of cars and driver's chances. That's the reason that NASCAR has the rule that you have to keep all four tires below that yellow line before you get to turn one. We saw Clint Boyer get penalized for running his car up on the racetrack, and that's the reason, because you can cause a wreck. That was a bad wreck right there, caused by a big mistake. Carl Edwards, thankfully, with that hard impact, able to walk away from his car, reigning nationwide series champion, and Stephen Wallace uh, climbing out of his heavily damaged Chevrolet after such a great run. Kelly Byers in the 47 car. He has climbed out and away. There is uh, Carl a uh, NASCAR requires that any driver that has any kind of contact on the track goes directly to the care center. That's a good rule because you never know. You want to be going and be checked out. Well, this is the one we talked about, the big one at Talladega. Oh, no, no, Lee, two there. Say hi, say hi, go high, go high. Go high. Yep. Now David Rudeman's onboard camera. We'll show you what David saw. There's Mike Wallace. All right, hold it up there, hold it up there, hold it up there, hold it up there. Lab car just wrecked the whole field, Jerry. Kyle Bush thought he could hang back and avoid trouble, but it was not to be. He Go was two. involved as well. These guys at this point are going through the trial and just racing as they normally would. Yeah, you see that 88? Not expecting the one back. Slow one down low, slow one down low. Watch this, get, watch this. A huge mistake on Kevin LePage's part to pull up front of this group. Good. 33 car, Kale Gale driving for Kevin Delena Harvey. Back it down, 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 come on down, come on down. Come on down. Kid from Mobile, Alabama, coming home to drive uh, on his home racetrack in a nationwide car for the first time he was involved. Again, the 61 car. Now, what's Carl Edwards?
looking up across a racetrack from turn one. There comes a Reed Sorensen just sliding right over the camera. Right into your living room as these cars come by at 180 miles an hour. DJ, in terms of Carl Edwards and how much time or how little time he had to react, what is that like in the car when you when you suddenly there you look up and there's another car sitting there and you're you're running 100 miles an hour faster? Yeah, it, it, there's nothing that you can do. And obviously Carl had no idea that that car was going to pull up on the racetrack. You, you really can't see anything in front of these cars, so you have no idea. You saw Mike Wallace was making a move to go to the inside of David Rudeman. He shot back to the right when he saw the car pull up on. I'm sure it took them all by surprise, the ones that could see. But it's a terrible feeling. You know, a lot, most of the time, you're, you see that happening as you're going through an accident. But this is just very, very unfortunate that these guys were doing such a great job having a great race and, and then to have something like this to happen. So, you know, we're seeing that, that right now these guys can't work on these cars uh, under the red flag condition. They, they can look at them and see what they need to, to uh, what tools they're going to need, what all they're going to need to fix. But they, they are not allowed to, to work this time. So it's just a, a very unfortunate situation and one that really could have and should have been avoided. Yeah, no excuse for that kind of an accident right there because we have, there's rules in place. NASCAR has strict rules on these cars staying below that yellow line until they get to the corner. And, uh, you know, Kevin should have stayed below that line. Latest count is uh, at least 14 cars sustained some significant damage. Uh, two or three others may have minor fender damage. And again, they cannot work on these cars uh, during the red flag. A lot of uh, debris will need to be picked up down in turns one and two as we are under a red flag condition at Talladega. It's what everybody dreads here at Talladega, the big one. And it took out as many as 16 cars, lap 70 in turn one, hard impact. Back the with more updates fire, in just a moment. The ring of fire. The taste of love is sweet. Back at Talladega, well, a leader falls, but the war rages on. One of the most compelling and powerful episodes of the season on an all-new lost Thursday at its new time, 10 Eastern, 9 Central, followed by a new Gray's Anatomy. And speaking of lost, uh, here are the drivers who have lost a chance at a good finish at Talladega. Uh, those are the cars involved, and some of them had a good chance possibly of picking up a win today. Many of these drivers uh, in the points. Four, I mean, uh, these are four or five of the top ten in, in the NASCAR Nationwide Series points that have now headed back to the garage area with heavily damaged cars. This is the fifth caution flag of the day. Now let's show you what happened on lap number 11. It began in turn three. Tire issue for the 40 car and the reigning IRL and Indy 500 champion Dario Franchitti comes across and this gets hard impact into the left side of his Dodge. He's been taken to the local hospital for further evaluation. And this latest one here on lap 70 and 71, at least 16 cars involved. The 61 car of Kevin LePage down on the inside and the lead draft comes by and a uh, hard impact by Carl Edwards and others as the cars have now been red flagged and pulled uh, to a rest here on the racetrack. Well, for more on safety and why we can, these drivers can walk away by and large from these kind of impacts, let's go down to our ESPN Dish Tech Center and hear from Tim Brewer. Thanks, Jerry. Folks, we're going to show you a lot of different things in the Dish Tech Center. What we have, this net contains all this equipment right around the driver's head. What we also have here is a nice light helmet. You know, Bill Simpson, he does a phenomenal job with working with technology to make this helmet lighter because if the helmet's lighter, it's going to keep the head of the driver in place. Another thing, that Hans device. You know, I wish this thing would have came around a long time ago because it holds the driver's head. You know, it doesn't let it... Uh, have serious injury to the neck, the spine area. But this helmet weighs less than a, about a pound. And it, that's good innovations. But when we come back, if we keep this driver contained right here in this cocoon with the fireproof system, as far as the uh, uniform's concerned, the belts are properly affixed, you got padding on both sides of the legs. You know, we do everything we can to, you know, improve safety for these drivers. And it's one of these deals to where the guys are friends, they do a great job. And, you know, we even like these guys. Right, DJ? 
Yeah, you're exactly right, Tim. Uh, it's, it, we've done a, a lot of things over the past few years that ha have really helped us out. But uh, one of the guys that was involved uh, in that accident and uh, was up in the points in second place is now with Shannon. Hey, guys, we're down here with Carl Edwards, who's come out of the Infield Care Center. He's actually waiting to see the replay of the wreck. So, so there was no indication that the 61 was coming off a of pit road or, or coming back onto the track. Look, I don't even know what color a car was uh, hit. I just want to make sure that I don't make some sort of stupid statement but, um, before I see a replay. But um, in my mind, unless, uh, unless it shows otherwise, it just looked like somebody, uh, I, think, I think it was a 61, Kevin LePage. I, I think he just pulled up right in front of the field. I, I don't know. Um, it's too bad save, the Save-A-Lot guys were all here. And uh, last time we had a great race car, we, we wrecked in, uh, in, um, in Vegas. Here it is. Yeah, so I'm driving along, minding my own business. And good afternoon. That was, um, I don't know what, uh, I'm just glad I didn't get hurt there. Glad I didn't get a, a piece of roll bar or something like that stuck through my floorboard. Well, it certainly was a, a big hit from what we saw on TV. How are you feeling right now? They've released you, but how do you feel? I'm great. I'm just uh, just really frustrated. I mean, this whole um, restrictor plate deal is, it's a great spectacle. You know, it's great for the fans, but um, stuff like that could kill somebody. That's just the bottom line. All right, well, Carl Edwards, good to see that he's out of the infield care center. Mike? And another guy studying the replays was Reed Sorensen. Uh, unfortunately for him, he was one of the few guys who was able to drive his car back in here. Do you think you guys can repair this thing and get it out? I don't know. It's, uh, I don't know if I should have drove it back, but we did uh, just to, so these guys could look at it. And it's like a junkyard in here with all these cars. Um, just hate it for these Supercuts guys. They, they did a great job all weekend. Just came in, tried to get a good run for them, uh, have a little fun. And it was fun. Um, you know, I was having a great time out there today, and I can't thank them enough. They had a lot of work to do this weekend already, so uh, I don't understand really what happened there. I just saw the replay there. That was, that was pretty wild for sure, but uh, once you get involved in one of those wrecks, there's not much you can do. What could you see inside the race car during that? Not much. Uh, I actually did see one of the cars go up in the air, and, uh, you know, I was already in the outside lane, and I just tried to slow down as much as I could, and, and then pretty, you're pretty much a ping-pong ball in the middle then, so... Uh, just, just hate it for, for all these crew guys that work on these cars. And, um, you know, once something happens in the front of the field like that, it's pretty much guaranteed there's going to be at least 10 or 15 cars in the wreck. So uh, just maybe need to review the, the blend rule or something because that, that was uh, a non-racing incident that, that caused that wreck. So uh, maybe, maybe they can look at it and try to get a little bit better uh, maybe for tomorrow even. Doc? Thank you. My question to our experts up here, is this a function of restrictor plate racing or is this a situation where a driver makes a mistake and just pulls up in front of somebody and it could happen at Charlotte or Texas or Las Vegas? Yeah, you know, we've all made mistakes as drivers out here. There's not one in this race today that hasn't made a mistake at some point in time. So we're not trying to hammer Kevin LePage here, but it was a mistake made by a driver and it was magnified because of restrictor plate racing because you have that whole pack of cars you know if that happens at another track you might get one or two involved but because all of these guys were running 25 cars in a pack and when one driver makes a huge mistake like that was right in front of the entire pack then uh bad things are going to happen i'm so glad that all of these guys are able to walk away and talk i know i've been there i know their their frustration level because you come into this race knowing that something's going to happen. And again, they were doing such a good job just in normal racing to, to have something like this uh, take them all out and put them in that position is what is so frustrating for them. Yeah, that's what's a bummer. We were having such a great race. Every one of these guys were running within inches and doing a great job. And, uh, and then one mistake from one guy like that just ruined the whole race. So. We began the day talking about these guys are, are fearless, but when you look into their eyes at Talladega, you know that this day is different. They know that things can happen. And we talk about the big one and the things that happen here, the big multi-car crashes. We talk to drivers about their thoughts about what can happen at Talladega in the past and what we just saw happen today. The big one, everyone dreads. Literally, you could be right in the middle of the whole thing and be fine, or, or you could be nowhere near the wreck and somehow you get caught up in it. It's so intense, and, and you can't do anything about it. Oh, 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 boy, the two car upside down, over and onto Scott Riggs. When you start crashing, then you realize how fast you're going because it takes forever to stop.
The Aaron's 312 for the NASCAR Nationwide Series at Talladega Super Speedway. Normally fast and frantic racing action right now is stilled under the red flag after a multi-car accident down in turn number one. An accident begun when a car coming off pit road got onto the track in front of a steaming pack of cars at full speed. Uh, the whole pack's coming off four, but they've got, talking about a piece of debris, they're all gonna blow by you, so just stay low. Watch the blend line, watch the blend line. And here comes the pack. Oh. Voice of Kevin LePage's spotter on his radio as he came off the pit lane. Kevin has come from the infield care center now. Let's hear from him with Mike Massaro. And Alan, you can see the disappointment on the face of Kevin LePage as he assesses the damage on his car. Kevin, what happened? Well, it all started when we had a loose wheel and I came down Pitt Road and uh, as I was leaving Pitt Road, uh, the spotter says pack's coming. So uh, I stayed down till I got in turn one and got up on the racetrack and the first half a dozen cars or so passed me and next thing you know, I got rear-ended. So, uh, you know, everybody's mad at me for pulling up on the racetrack, but you go to the driver's meeting, they said, stay uh, stay low till you get in turn one, pull up on the racetrack. And uh, like I said, the first half a dozen cars got by me without any problem. So, um, you know, my spotter's been spotting for me for a number of years and I think uh, uh, they did, she did a great job. And, um, you know, I was down low, had my, matter of fact, left side's lower than the apron. And, um, you know, there's 40 other guys up there trying to spot these things. and. Uh, they couldn't see me coming out of the pits with this red and yellow race car, uh, then maybe they'd need to get new spotters. Well, guys, obviously a very disappointed driver there. So thoughts of uh, Kevin LePage there on uh, his involvement in that accident. I want to bring in uh, DJ Andy and Doc from, from up in the booth and talk about this now. The instructions the drivers are given at the driver's meeting about the blend rule. And let's just talk about that for, for just a second. Kevin is there saying that it's till you get to turn one and then you come up on the racetrack. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is that the instructions for today were that you had to stay with those wheels below that line till you got around to turn number two. Am I wrong on that, or, or are we in agreement that that's, uh, that's what the instructions were? Alan, we, we are beside uh, the NASCAR tower up here, and we have been told that the instructions were indeed just that, that you had to stay uh, all four below the yellow line, the blend line, and uh, you could then put two tires above it as you're going into turn two, and then you could get above it uh, in turn two. So uh, uh, their instructions, according to what they're telling us, was that you could not come up on the racetrack right there. In fact, Clint Boyer, was uh, black flagged uh, when he came back on the racetrack earlier today because he went up across that line at that point onto the racetrack and was brought back down pit road. So uh, DJ uh, and guys, when, when, you know, when that happens, unfortunately, there's a huge speed discrepancy and then we saw the results. Regardless of what the rule was, it takes, a, you know, just a little bit of common sense right there would tell you not to come up on the racetrack when you got, these guys were racing three and four wide at times getting down in there. So, you know, I don't, there wasn't a lot to be gained by trying to pull up on the racetrack at that point. And you took exactly what I was thinking that yeah, sometimes you just forget about the rule and, and you use common sense because, again, this is a totally different racetrack. Uh, I did, the, the rule has been different over the years and things. It used to be that you could, could put uh, your left side tires on the yellow line going out there. But regardless of that, you have to look at the situation and take into account that these guys are coming uh, over 100 miles an hour faster than what you were running at that time, and you give them room, and then you fall in. It's unfortunate that he had the problem, but you just created a bigger problem. All the carnage down in the garage area and uh, 16 cars heavily damaged, and you saw a moment ago the distant look of one Brad Keselowski who thought yesterday he might have a chance and might have the car to get his first win here today. Let's go down to Jamie. Well, and he even led some laps early on in the race, and he was just watching our monitors to see the replay. And, Brad, what was your assessment of what took place? Well, obviously the 61 car pulled up in front of the field. I don't know why. Maybe he didn't know the field was behind him. It's hard to tell him. But uh, tore up some cars and uh, unfortunately got us. We're not that bad. We just uh, hit with the right front wheel and broke the center link. Once we get that fixed, we'll, uh, we'll be right back out there and uh, hopefully we won't lose too many laps and uh, go get some good points out of it. Because, of course, guys, more laps on that track means more points. So his car, one of the lesser damaged of all 16 cars involved. So Brad Keselowski looking to get back out there, guys. Trying to hang in the top 10 in the points, Jamie. He had led three times today for nine laps. And you see now, you wonder why these guys are not working on the car. The Navy crew, they're not allowed to touch the car under a red flag. 
Brad Keselowski driving for JR Motorsports, Dale Earnhardt Jr. There's a look at his season. His best finishes, a couple of fourth place in 2008 NASCAR Nationwide Series. You're watching ESPN on ABC.